Hello, and you are listening to Week 8 of Oneness Project Light One-on-One with Israel Kelly. I'm your host, Cassandra. For those of you that are new, welcome, and thank you for joining us. Our purpose for each episode is to enhance your understanding of life, the universe, and the world around us by exploring a specific topic more in depth through the eyes of Source. As many of you know, Israel Kelly is fully coalesced with Source Energy and has been granted with the universal knowing. He is here to bring messages of love to humanity and to facilitate all of us with the expansion of our consciousness. In last week's episode, we explored the topic of ascension and learned that ascension is a state of consciousness, not a physical transformation, like I had originally thought. And it is an individual choice, not a planetary event, like I had previously believed. It is also occurring now as we speak, as more and more individuals have chosen to awaken to a higher level of consciousness. What have you decided? Something to think about. Tonight, we are dedicating this time to you, our devoted listeners. We have a special guest lined up who will be joining us shortly. So if you have questions for Israel and would like to be a guest on our future episodes, write to us and let us know. We would love to hear from you. You can also connect with us on Facebook under Israel's group Non-Physical Consciousness. Don't worry, more information is available at the end of this video. And speaking of Israel, here he is now. Hello Israel, welcome. I am very glad to be here, Cassandra, once again. Are you ready to answer some tough questions from one of our listeners? We feel grateful and delighted to have this opportunity. Bring it on. Awesome. Before I introduce our guests, I do have some questions for you before we begin. Last week, when you explained how to begin the process of ascension, you explained that we need to remove resistance, doubts, limitations, and so on. And I mentioned how this process sounded very similar to connecting with our higher self. Are they one and the same? They are exactly the same principle, connecting to your higher self, expanding your consciousness, ascending, it's all the same, it's all part of all there is, exactly the same steps. Interesting. My next question is, many masters channel their information, however you do not because you are coalesced with source energy. Can you explain the difference between channeling and how you are able to receive your divine knowledge? As time progresses, and as we humans are constantly evolving and changing, we are able to understand concepts that before they were uh, perceived differently. Um, So, before it was people that they were um, channeling, or uh, coalescing with themselves. Um, And now that topic is understood uh, differently as all of us were able to coalesce with the larger part of who we are, that's our spiritual part, and able to bring the message of unconditional love and bring message from the, the universe um, to, to humans in order to expand and help to expand their consciousness. That sounds wonderful. Thank you for that clarification, Izzy. My final question for you is, do you consider yourself and other masters special? Were you chosen to be our teacher and leader in this time of awakening? Or can any one of us do this? All of us, we are master. Every single human is a master. We are just here to have a new experience. We're not learning anything. Uh, We, with expansion of consciousness, we are just remembering who we are and helping people to remember who they are. We are one, um, one unit. Uh, expressing and, and sp- having an experience in a different, many different ways, 7.5 billion ways. We are just one expression, multiplying and having experience in many, many different ways. So we all masters. We induce ourselves to forget who we are in order to have uh, a new experience in time, space, reality. So calling myself or calling anybody else master it's, it's not, it's, I don't think it's the right thing, but because we all of us, we are the same. We All of us, we are masters. 
Son of us were granted with the remembrance. Son of us, a few of us were granted with the, with the knowing. And we understand the concept that we're trying to explain everybody else. However, we all know the same. We all part of all there is. We are source energy in a physical form. Sounds fantastic, Israel. Thank you. Joining us now from New York City is Eliza. Hello, Eliza. Welcome to One is Project Light one-on-one -on -one with Israel Kelly. Hello, Cassandra. Hello, Israel. Thank you so much for having me. I have been following One Us Project like I think since the beginning and I love all your episodes. So it is a privilege for me to give you my questions and also to ask them myself. So all my gratitude for that and thank you so much for the light you lead for everyone so we are reaching our path. Wow. Thank you for that wonderful opening, Eliza. We are very happy you could join us. Let's begin, shall we? So my first question I have is déjà vu. It is a human illusion, or do we really have them? And if it's not an illusion, why do we have them? Does it have a purpose? Thanks for being with us here, Liza. That's a very good question. Déjà vu. It's the closest thing to be in the vortex. Um, time is not lineal. Time, the, the time is lineal is a per, human perception. We learn to understand and perceive time linearly. Uh, time is, 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 is attached to that um, concept of, of relativity. So whatever is happening, what you understand is the past or the future, Whatever is happening, whatever occurrence of the reality is happening now. So whenever you have these flashes of things that they look familiar to you, is because you are within the waters, because you are in the moment of now, because you are able to um, remember any other reality. As we, all of us, we are not only in this reality on time space now, but we are going through many, many realities at the same time. So when we have these flashes that makes make us feel like this is something that we already know, we already saw, we already experienced before, it's because we are within the waters and we are able to um, uh, understand the vibration as we are vibrational beings, but we detach ourselves from that reality while being humans on physical form. When we are able to um, get the frequency that make, make us remember a sequence of events or one event that we call a déjà vu is because we are in the vortex and as time is not lineal but vertical we are able to synchronize without knowing with other realities and, and is it good? It, it has any purpose? Is it, the purpose of you being able to understand that sequence of other events and realities is to let you know that good feeling that you are synchronized, that you're vibrating positive, that you are able to stay in the vortex, be in the vortex, that you are feeling differently, that you have you are made of joy, you're made of unconditional love. It's a flash. It's it's like it's it's, it's like showing you something that and that instance make you feel very good about yourself. It's, it's a way to, it's a reminder, it's a connection from other realities that comes to assist, come to make, um, feels real, it feels real because you're able to remember and connect that vibration that is within the vortex. And as time is not linear, but vertical, you're able to um, understand, remember, that sequence, that event that is happening now, in the moment of now, but in other, in any other reality that is your reality as well, but you're not aware as you are now only paying attention, only focus on this um, physical form you have on time space reality. Furthermore, I was asking myself, people who are not awakened, does the law of attraction work for them and they don't even realize it? Can they create their reality 
even if they are not aware? I always wondered that. The universal law of attraction doesn't stop. If you are aware of the universal law of attraction or not, you're attracting things. You're attracting for the way you think, for the way you feel. You're attracting for your thoughts. You're attra attracting. If you're negative, you attract negative things. If you are positive, you are attracting positive things. That that you resist persists. Whatever you try to push away keeps coming back to you.、Um, so the law of attraction works. It doesn't matter if you know that it exists or not, because it's the road in which our life.、Um, it's, it's, it's the road in which, which our life.、Um, Drives is 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 that what we, our physical vehicle, our human body, goes to that avenue of the law of attraction, in which we go and have a life, we go and have a wanting, we go and have wishes, we have dreams, or we struggle and so on. Whatever is that vibration that produces from your your thoughts, from your feelings, they become things and. They do so because the law of attraction is working there. It doesn't matter if you know it's law of attraction or not. Law of attraction is always there. It's it's the perfect tool given to humans to create. We we came here to time space reality to have a new experience to create a reality to have a preference dislikes likes and so on. And that tool, the tool, perfect tool to do that, it was given to us the universal law of attraction. So it doesn't really matter if a person is aware that the universal law of attraction exists or not. It the person will create the human will create the reality no matter what because the law of attraction is working twenty four seven your whole life no matter what. And here is my last question: To have an abundant life, we always need to be in the vortex. However, us as humans,、um, we need to plan. We are thinking of the future. Not because、uh, we have to, but just because we are humans. So I wondered, how can we have an abundant life with planning the future and being in the vortex at the same time? Is there a trick? How does that work? Wow, Eliza, that's a very good question. And I tell you, I'm gonna jump to the trick. The trick is that you have to live in the moment of now. If you are thinking about the future, if you are worried about what's going to happen next and so on, you're not going to enjoy the moment of now. And if you don't enjoy the moment of now, you are not grateful. And if you are not grateful, you will have more of the same. You will have more of those things you like. In order for you to receive more of the goods, you need to be grateful. And if you are too Um, paying attention to the future, worry about what's going to happen next, and so on. You're not living the moment of now. You don't live in the moment of now. You're not appreciating. You're not being grateful. You're not counting your blessings, and you're not in the vortex. So, the trick will be to stay in the vortex. Will be every time you breathe in, breathe out. You have reasons to be grateful. You have reasons to be feel blessed. Right there, you get into the vortex. Every time you feel. That you are alive. Every time you feel that you have so much to feel good about yourself, and you worry less about what's going to happen next, things next will come next when it's supposed to come. If you are to worry about the future, you're not enjoying the present. And as you're not enjoy, enjoying the present, which which is the time that was given to you to enjoy the moment of now. You are will be out of the vortex. You will be worried. You're not gonna be able to enjoy life. You're not gonna be able to manifest your dreams because you are to worry about what's gonna happen next. Trick is to stay to stay in the vortex. Live in the moment of now. Enjoy your life now. Don't worry about the details. Don't worry about to know too much about how things are gonna be. Where they're gonna come from? Who's gonna give it to you? Where you're gonna get that? When are you gonna get it? Those details are putting you, taking you away from the joy of enjoying the moment of now. If you don't enjoy the moment of now, you don't feel grateful. You don't feel blessed, and then you are putting yourself out of the vortex. To stay in the vortex, you have to be grateful, count your blessings, and that's a trick. 
Awesome, Israel. Thank you. And thank you, Eliza, for your questions. They were great. Thank you so much for having me, and I hope it won't be the last time. I really enjoy to follow your path, and you have helped me a lot. And I just wanted to thank you also for everyone else, for you, Cassandra, and you, Israel, for being the light to help others to see. All my unconditional love for the both of you and for all the listeners. And I hope to see you soon. Goodbye. Ah, such kind words, Eliza. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure having you on our show. And of course, you are welcome back anytime. Take care now. Israel, before we conclude our show for this evening, do you have any final thoughts you would like to share with us? Final thoughts are, we are all of us. Source energy, not occupying physicality and a human form. We're here to have joy. We're here to create ourselves anew. We're here for the new experience. We're co creating our reality. We have the universal of attraction to get and fulfill and manifest all things we want. Let's stay positive. Let's count our blessings. Let's feel joy. We are made of unconditional love. And there's nothing we cannot achieve when we stay vibrating positive. We're vibrational beings and we're here for the joy, we're here for the experience. Let's, let's be happy. Let's be happy because that's what we are, happiness. We are joy. We are made of unconditional love. That was beautiful, Israel. Thank you so much for sharing your divine knowledge with all of us. Until next time. This is Cassandra for Oneness Project Light one-on-one -on -one with Israel Kelly. Thanks for listening. It's a privilege to be here. Thank you for having me. Thanks a lot.